Please welcome Client Solutions Director Ross Edwards and Vice President of Product Marketing Kevin Mole. Hi, good morning. Um, as was mentioned, I'm Kevin Mole, VP of Product Marketing, joined here by Ross Edwards of Client Solutions. You know, Brad started the conference yesterday and said, to fix the friction in payments, we need to reset the piping. And today, Ross and I will show you a little bit of that piping getting under the hood. Um, you know, for our, our customers, the 300 plus customers across 70 countries, the payment experience for the end user is simple, frictionless, fast. To show you, that demo would take 20 seconds. But when you look behind the scenes, that's where the magic happens. Um, and we'll showcase that today, really, in a couple different settings. One, in a flow where is a counterparty uh, bilateral payment, we call it, which is not using digital assets. Um, that's a pre-funded relationship, typically. And we'll also talk a little bit about uh, a flow using uh, on-demand liquidity. For those of you uh, who've been around, you probably know it as XRapid previously. Um, and so we'll go into those with a little bit of detail, but from three perspectives, really. Um, keep in mind, Ripple doesn't sell a product to the end user, whether it's an individual remitter or a small business. We enable that for our partners. And so we will show a, a, a perspective, though, of the end user, because part of the technology that we enable you to provide has a, a, a great impact on that user experience. We'll also show you from the perspective of two counterparties, the financial institutions, the sender, and the receiver. And of course, we'll get into a little bit of the code. Don't worry, we won't go deep, but we'll show you some of the API calls. Um, but before we go into a payment flow, and, and I, before I turn it all over to Ross, let me set up the, so, quote unquote, the architectural stack. Um, the first is the sender. Now, of course, um, for our customers, they're, they're licensed entities, they're financial institutions. Um, they have their own set of customers, individuals, businesses. But when they join RippleNet, they form a counterparty relationship with a receiver. Now, a receiver, in the case of RippleNet, uh, could be a bank or payment provider, is not always the end destination. Um, they could clear into their own bank accounts, but in many ways, they clear into a broader network, whether it's cash, wallets, uh, even card-based payouts. And so that's the what we call the last mile. That may or may not necessarily run on RippleNet, right? So we're going to focus on the, those counterparty relationships. And the first piece of the technology is really the bi-directional messaging component, as you see highlighted here. Um, certain pieces of information, of course, Ross will go into detail, but uh, KYC information, payment details, FX rates, and fees uh, live here. And then below that is where the rub happens, the settlement. And, and this is where I feel like you know, the blockchain-based technology and blockchain-inspired technology comes into play with a huge benefit here you'll see that the, the payment on Ripple either succeeds or failures, fails. Uh, there's no two states of the world, and that's really important. Uh, this is where the subledgers uh, live, and the validator in the middle using cryptography is, is allowing that, uh, the success or failure through uh, what we call atomic settlement. Uh, and then, of course, there's an FX ticker. Uh, uh, our sender and receiver have, have a relationship in, in terms of who's providing the FX, and we get real-time quotes. Uh, on that side. So this is th these are the building blocks. I'm going to turn it over to Ross to showcase our first payment flow. Thanks, Kevin. So as Kevin mentioned, it's very important that we understand ultimately what the experience for the customer is. But we want to demonstrate how those components that Kevin just walked through and the RippleNet protocol supports that experience. In this case, we have Fast Remit, which is a remittance company out of the UK who has an app that their users are using to send remittances across the world. And in this particular case, through to Philippines. Of course, the channel is managed and, and provided to the customer by the financial institution. There are many of you in this room that are providing apps to your customers today. And there are many other channels that we work with many of you on at the moment. A critical part of this is Sprout Bank on the Philippine side which is performing the payout that Kevin mentioned. In this particular case, Fast Remit and Sprout have a commercial relationship, an account relationship, if you like, which we'll see is critical to the underlying settlement. So to start off the process, the customer will enter details about how much 
funds they want to send, or in this case, how much they want delivered to the beneficiary. In this case, we're delivering 5,000 pesos, you know, probably to a family member or friend in the Philippines. They'll also be able to select beneficiary details that are going to be communicated to enable that payout, as well as all the regulatory processes that are needed. The first step that really happens when engaging RippleNet is the quotation process to get all of the commercial details, as well as the underlying settlement instructions agreed between Fast, Bank, Fast Remit and Sprout Bank. And we can see that that happens in a single API call, and the pricing and details can be provided to the consumer in real time. This, of course, provides a breakdown of the transaction fees and the FX rate based on the underlying liquidity arrangement between the institutions. In this case, being provided by Fast Remit, but that's different under different circumstances and for different corridors. The customer can see that this is going to cost them exactly 78 uh, pounds 51. And they can commit to that transaction. Once they do commit, those beneficiary details, together with important details about the remitter, about payment purpose and other details, are sent by Fast Remit through RippleNet to Sprout Bank. And this is part of what we call the payment object, so a single view of the payment shared by both institutions. This data is provided in the standards that are flexible, but based on ISO 2022. We work with some institutions to expand where ISO 2022 can't cover the data required, but this is immediately shared with Sprout Bank to enable them to validate and screen the details. Once they approve those details, they lock the payment, ensuring that those payment instruction details can't be changed and that we can proceed to settlement based on fast remit confirming. It's at this point we see the impact to the ledgers and the validation process that Kevin mentioned. Fast remit will initiate the payment which will be immediately communicated in that single view of the payment to Sprout Bank and will initiate the ledger update using that validation process. Initially, the debit legs between the institutions are processed to ensure there's adequate liquidity and that the financial agreement that was formed as part of that quote process can be successfully executed at all of the institutions involved in this case at both Fast Remit and Sprout Bank. This is then cryptographically checked using a standard protocol to ensure that the actions by the institutions and by the ledgers specifically meet the contractual details of the payment they've agreed to. Only once all of those funds are secured is that validation process successful, producing a cryptographic audit trail and enabling the deb uh, credit leg between the institutions processed, essentially releasing the funds, in this case taken from Fast Remit's Nostro, and providing real-time feedback to both Fast Remit and Sprout Bank that the settlement has executed between them, that there is now an obligation to pay the beneficiary passed to Sprout Bank. This is all immediately available through that single view of the payment again. Once Sprout Bank receives that notification, they'll be able to process the credit leg. In this case, forwarding that payment through to a digital wallet. But we work with many institutions across cash payout, across, of course, bank accounts and other channels. An important step once that credit leg is processed, once the beneficiary has the funds, is Sprout Bank sends a message back to Fast Remit through RippleNet. And this is a very simple step, but it's critical, because ultimately the customer is not using this service to send a payment. They're using this service for the beneficiary to receive a payment. And through this process and through Fast Remit and Sprout Bank's interaction on RippleNet, they're able to get confirmation in real time that their family or their friends 
have received those funds. Yeah, so what we just saw was what we call a bilateral payment. It's, it's, uh, it's the most basic, but as we built out our product and features and functions, We've added things, and uh, you'll see on the list here, multi-hop, which in involves three or more parties. Uh, we have request to pay functionality built into the technology. Um, and on-demand liquidity, which we'll go through now, is using digital assets or XRP in the flow. If you are interested in others, please, there is a demo booth. If you exit, uh, exit the room here, go right. Um, someone from the Ripple team can showcase or answer questions you have about any of these. Um, but let's talk a little bit about on-demand liquidity using, um, of course, Ripple technology. You'll see a lot of similarities to what we just talked about, but really the settlement piece is where it, it differentiates. And that's, for, for, for me, that's a game changer. The ability to not have to pre-fund accounts around the world and open up these no-share accounts is a, is, a, is a huge benefit for our customers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, importantly, we did a bilateral payment between Fast Remittent and uh, Sprout Bank in this case. But ultimately, the advantage is the scale and the innovation that can be built on top of that. As Kevin mentioned, we'll walk through on-demand liquidity, but ultimately, this plugs into RippleNet as a whole. So we're going to go through the same scenario, but in this case, Fast Remit and Sprout Bank won't have an account-based relationship. They still know each other and have done the due diligence, and they still trust each other in terms of exchanging payment information, but there's no pre-funded balance on the Filipino end that we saw in the previous scenario. You'll notice importantly through this, there's not a huge impact and actually no impact to the customer experience. They're still expecting a real-time experience with transparent pricing and processing of the payment. In this case, They'll go through the same process to deliver, in this case, 2,500 peso to their family. And we'll see the initial steps, entering the beneficiary details, providing the regulatory information required, and validating and screening of those details by the sending institution still occurs. The pricing or quote process still takes place, enabling fast remit to inform the customer, exactly how much this will cost to deliver through to the beneficiary in Philippines. This is based on the markets that we'll see updated as part of the settlement process. It's receiving real-time pricing from the exchanges involved for, in this case, sterling to XRP and XRP to Filipino peso that will enable that real-time delivery of funds to Sprout Bank and ultimately onwards to the beneficiary. Importantly, the same regulatory processes still take place. Fast Remit shares the information about the payment that can be validated and screened by Sprout Bank prior to settlement occurring, in this case, through the exchanges and through the XRP ledger. This follows the same standards that our bilateral process used. The payment is still locked, ensuring the parties have that same single view of the payment and that cannot change as settlement and payout to the beneficiary takes place. Again, Fast Remit is, is able to immediately initiate settlement based on that. This is where the significant change in process happens as we've removed that pre-funding position and we're using the power of XRP, the ability to settle in real time globally to settle this payment. We can see that on the send side, at the pound-based exchange here, that Fast Remit has a funded position in sterling and is able to, in real time, convert that from pounds to XRP. And this is based on the pricing that's quoted up front and happens in real time. RippleNet will then manage the transfer of that XRP across the XRP ledger to the Filipino exchange. This is a movement of value from the UK to Philippines in real time. There is no pre-funding in pesos required. 
The exchange picks up those receipt of XRP in real time, and RippleNet will then instruct a conversion of XRP to Filipino peso to fund Sprout Bank in real time. Sprout Bank immediately receives the 2,500 pesos and receives notification through the same mechanism as the settlement process in the bilateral case. They have received those funds and have that obligation to pay out to the beneficiary. So through no direct account relationship, Fast Remit and Sprout Bank have exchanged the value to settle this payment. Sprout Bank will receive notification of that and perform the payout to the digital wallet, same as the first scenario. Of course, that final step is still critical. The customer needs to know that the payout to the beneficiary has occurred. So they're receiving in real time confirmation that that payment is finalized and that their friends or family have received those funds. And this is happening whilst they're on their phone delivering those funds to the beneficiary in Philippines in real time. Great, thank you. And what I love about this is um, it's 24-7, 365, because these exchanges operate on that basis. And so even on a Sunday, you could send a payment. And also, Brad mentioned 10 trillion of trapped capital. Um, in the first flow, we saw a pre-funded account in the destination exchange. Um, and I think releasing some of that trapped capital, a large, large chunk of the 10 trillion, will free up so much more capital for uh, our, our, our customers to grow their business. And, and we see that, and you'll hear about it from Alex at MoneyGram and Brad when they come on the stage in just a little bit. Mm -hmm.